Okay, this is something new concerning the Yellowstone supervolcano. Sebastian Kettley, UK, Express UK reports. The scorching magma chamber is radioactive. This is according to US Geological Survey scientists. New revelation. Yellowstone supervolcano, terrifying magma chamber, which uh, is only three miles down from our feet as we walk over the caldera, the park that is, is full of radioactive molten rock. This is what scientists have shockingly revealed. The magma chamber under Yellowstone in northwest U.S. on Wyoming near Montana and Idaho is the source of the supervolcano's potentially cataclysmic power Yellowstone's magma chamber last blew its lid about six, the super eruption was about 640,000 years ago, another uh, major eruption 70,000 years ago, and it's erupted 80 times since then. And they say that uh, one of these smaller eruptions is overdue by about 10,000 years. Anyway, the super eruption covered swaths of North American continent in ash. The scorching chamber only sits about three miles to nine miles, that's five kilometers to 15 kilometers, beneath the surface. But that is not the only surprise. According to US Geological Survey, geologists which monitor volcano activity at Yellowstone, the magma chamber is full of radioactive elements. Deep beneath Yellowstone, the park that is, geologists have discovered deposits of radioactive mineral zircon. Zircon is known for its radioactive properties due to being rich in uranium and thorium. There are two radioactive chemical elements. Zircon, rich in uranium and thorium. Uranium in particular is commonly used as we know in nuclear weapons and is the go-to fuel for nuclear reactors. Thorium is a similarly unstable element which radiates alpha particles and is more abundant in the Earth's crust than uranium is. Uranium-238, 98 and second element. Now, does this not, however, suggest, uh, this does not suggest that Yellowstone is a ticking nuclear time bomb of sorts. Instead, the weak radioactivity of Yellowstone's magma holds the key to unlocking the supervolcano secrets. Yellowstone and, in, and other also volcanic magma reservoirs, the zircon minerals, have shown incredible resilience to the heat and pressures of the supervolcano's system. This is a very surprising new finding. The resilience paired with the radioactive properties gives geologists an opportunity to study these zircon minerals and they do this to determine the age of the magma chamber. Mark Stelton, a research geologist with USGS, explains this process. And he did this in this week's issue of USGS Caldera Chronicles, and we're going to uh, do a new video concerning that. These come out just about every week, every Tuesday. The geologist wrote, to determine the age of Yellowstone's magma reservoir, researchers turned to a field of geology called geochronology. This is the study of the age of the Earth's minerals, like volcanic rocks and crystals. They contain, and it's typically based on, radioactive decay. The magma contains radioactive atoms that are incorporated into these crystals that grow from the magma. Over time, these radioactive atoms, the parent, will transform into another atom, the daughter at the known rate of radioactive decay. They've also given this new type of a diagram showing the caldera margin and the Yellowstone caldera, the hydrothermal system, and on top of that, this sits on top of the crystal mush, which is 85 to 95 percent crystals and 5 to 15 percent melt, which is five kilometers or three miles down from the surface. Now, geologists can then use the fact to their advantage, and they uh, do this by using a mass spectrometer instrument to determine the age of these minerals in which the atoms are contained. In the Yellowstone supervolcano, Dr. Stelton said the scientists have been able to analyze these zircon crystals 
from various Yellowstone eruptions dating as far back as only 160,000 years ago. That was way before the super eruption of 640,000 years ago. But it was way before the last major eruption of 70,000 years ago. He said results from these studies show that zircon crystals in these lavas can record as much as 150,000 years of growth in the magma chamber before the eruption. These data suggest that the modern crystals, much that underlies Yellowstone supervolcano caldera, may have existed in a state similar to what is imagined today since about 300,000 years ago. What this means is that the current magma chamber under Yellowstone National Park is at least as old as 300,000 years. Now, how old is Yellowstone Caldera current magma reservoir, and how do we know? Well, the Yellowstone Caldera Chronicles, July 1st edition, says that the magma reservoir exists beneath present-day Yellowstone Caldera has long been known. We've had some idea of what it may look like from seismology, but how long has the magma chamber existed? How can we explore such a complex question given that we can't directly see several kilometers deep under the ground. But as it turns out, in a way, we can use a crystal ball to look back in time at Yellowstone's magma chamber, the Zircon crystal ball. In a previous issue of Yellowstone Caldera Chronicles, titled Yellowstone's Mushy Past, the physical nature of Yellowstone's magmatic system was discussed, as pointed out in that article, techniques such as geophysics, physical imaging, can provide us with a picture of the magma chamber. These images show us that the magma reservoir underlying Yellowstone Caldera is not a large tank of molten rock, but instead it's a crystal mush, a semi-rigid region made up of about 85 to 95 percent solid, interlocking crystals with 5 to 15 percent melt, distributed within a crystalline flame framework. These geophysical images show us what Yellowstone Magma Reservoir looks like today, but how old is the crystal mush that makes up this magma reservoir? Before considering the question, it is important to understand that magmatic systems in place like Yellowstone are not a static phenomenon. In other words, although the greater Yellowstone area has been erupting magma for 2.1 million years, the magma reservoir underneath Yellowstone today is not the same as the one that existed 2.1 million years ago. As new magma is generated deep within the earth and moves into shallower levels of the crust, the memory of older magma reservoirs can be erased and new magma reservoirs form. So to determine the age of Yellowstone's magma res reservoir, researchers turn to the field of geology called geochronology, which is a study of the age of earth minerals materials like volcanic rocks and the crystals that they contain, and is typically based on radioactive decay. Magma contains radioactive atoms that are incorporated into crystals that grow from the magma, and over time, these radioactive atoms, the parent that is, will transform into another atom, the daughter, at a known rate via radioactive decay. The relative proportions of parent and daughter atoms, which are typically measured on an instrument called a mass spectrometer, can be used to determine the age of the mineral in which they are contained. Some minerals can exist within the crystal mush for very long periods of time before being involved in an eruption that brings the mineral grain to the surface. During this long resi residence in the magma reservoir, these crystals grow, and they continue to grow, and as new layers are added, they record the age of the reservoir by the proportion of parent and daughter atoms. Once these crystals are erupted, scientists analyze the growth layers to determine how long the crystals existed within the magma reservoir. And you keep in mind that these recorded growth histories do not mean the magma reservoir was molten during this time. Rather, it was a crystal mush for most of the history and only mostly molten around the time of the eruptions. At Yellowstone and other large volcanic systems, zircon is one of the most useful minerals for geochronology.
Zircon has high concentrations of uranium, which is a radioactive element, and zircon crystals can survive for long periods of time in a magmatic system, making it useful for determining how long a magma reservoir has existed. Using a technique called secondary ionization mass spectrometry, scientists have measured the age of zircon crystals hosted in Yellowstone lavas that erupted over the past 160,000 years, resulting from these studies show that zircon crystals in these lavas can record as much as 150,000 years of growth in a magma chamber before the eruption. These data suggest that the modern crystal mush that underlies Yellowstone caldera may have existed in a state similar to what is imagined today since about 300,000 years ago. Yellowstone is a dynamic place and changes frequently at the surface. The magma chamber beneath the surface, however, apparently has not changed much in hundreds of thousands of years. How do we know? We looked into our zircon crystal ball. This is from USGS, the latest Caldera Chronicles, July 1st today. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Capota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.